How do you get your secondary math students to really solve problems? Well, on today's resource review, we're looking at three teaching resources that might help. They are a CD-ROM of interactive spreadsheets, a series of books of mathematical challenges, and a book of mathematical puzzles. Recommending today's resources, we have Peter Hall. Peter is an AST of Mathematics at Imberhorn School in East Grinstead. And on the panel today, we have Dr Catherine Ogden. Catherine is Head of Mathematics at Heckmondwike Grammar School in West Yorkshire. And also on the panel is Matthew Fry, Head of Mathematics and Curriculum Leader at Hextable School in Swanley, Kent. And Matthew Tosh, our resource investigator, is going to be visiting a school to find out what a teacher and her class think of our resources. Well, Peter, welcome to the show. Your Thank you. first choice of resource for us today is a CD-ROM with supporting booklet, aptly called Mathematical Problem Solving. So tell us about this resource. What is it and why do you like it? It's uh, a set of spreadsheets and each spreadsheet's got a fairly straightforward problem, fairly simple problem that's fairly easy to understand what you're trying to do but isn't terribly difficult to solve, right, so needs okay. some, some thought and some work and some discussion. So I think lots of the tasks make a great starter for a lesson. Um, some of the things are very focused after having taught a particular topic, it might be a great way to finish that topic off. OK, well thank you very much. Now let's go over to Matthew Tosh, who has visited Richard Hale School in Hartford to see mathematical problem solving in action in the classroom. Mathematical problem solving with interactive spreadsheets is exactly what it says. You've got 16 spreadsheets and they're all pre-programmed and they give you lots of different activities to do. An example of this is this rectangles from squares. It's Fibonacci rectangles and you've just got to put in the values of all the little subsquares. And it gives you instant feedback as you can see here. And if I don't get an answer right, then I don't get a tick. There's also this booklet that gives you the solutions to the spreadsheets and tips on how you can use them in lessons. Well, let's go and see Jenny Andrews and her year 10 class to see how they're using the spreadsheets. Your next instruction on your activity will not come up until you have got the previous answer correct. OK then, Jenny, can you tell me how you've been using the spreadsheets today? Um, I've got them into pairs and each pair has a laptop and I've assigned a file to each pair and they're going to be working through that file. It's kind of team um, building in the pairs, um, but also using their applied math skills to go through these problem solving questions. Uh, they're easy to use and they're quite straightforward. The instructions are fantastic and once they've completed one line of the working out, the question is then, another question comes up underneath and it comes up with the answer. Um, and in terms of a teacher, that, that frees me up then that I can circulate the classroom. So what value do you think these bring to your lesson? The, the team building and, and working together and talking about the maths. And I think talking and, and pulling apart the, the question helps with their understanding of the maths that, that's involved. So what are your overall impressions of the spreadsheets? Very good. Um, the spreadsheets themselves are very professional, easy to use on the laptops. I'll be recommending them to the department and possibly the county to be used in other schools as well. Thank you very much. Positive recommendation. Let's go back to our panel. Peter, quite a favourable response from the teacher there. Mm -hmm. But one thing I, I thought about looking at these spreadsheets, they're not particularly dynamic and, and there isn't much feedback for the students. I think it's deliberately designed so that it doesn't uh, appear too negative. Right. Um, I think intentionally it doesn't kind of leap in and sort of spoon feed you a bit more and help you a bit more. Right. Just, just to leave you at that kind of neutral step of saying that hasn't worked, so have mm. another think. OK, well let's see what our panel think. Catherine? Well I've tried this resource with my Year 9 class and uh, we really enjoyed it. I uh, liked the way that the problems are structured with a fairly simple introduction. And once they've solved that simple problem, they're led through some questions which can sometimes be quite closed, but develop into more open questions. It's also nice that it's not entirely a computer-based work, and a lot of what the pupils have to do when answering the questions is actually write things down.
and whether they're working on their own or working in pairs, they will start talking to each other about what did you get and how did you do this particular part. OK. Matthew, what did you make of it? Well, I, I enjoyed using it with my class too. I worked with it uh, in, with different uh, age groups. The thing I liked most about it was the um, way, where you could go with these spreadsheets. Um, I, I did one where you could then take it on and talk about combinations and um, you know, real life ideas. And with the Fibonacci that we saw oh, yeah. uh, um, Jenny use, the links there into nature and to some more visual aspects of mathematics were, were excellent. Well, thank you all. It's time now to move on to Peter's second choice of resource for us today. And it's a suite of three books called Maths Challenge. Here we are. This is Maths Challenge 1. Explain this resource to us and why you like it. OK. Um, this is a very... Well, challenging set of books, really, I guess, <laughs> hence the title. And, and what it offers is an enrichment that uses the math they know how to do, but asks difficult questions about it. The book offers some hints right. before you get to the straight solution, so right. a bit of hints to help the teacher prompt what could go on next. What they offer is, again, that sense of fairly simple maths, but then asking it in a fairly challenging way, so that you can take a fairly easy concept and, and make quite complex discussion about it. All right, thank you very much. Well, now let's go back to Richard Hale School in Hartford to see how this particular resource went down in the classroom. Maths Challenge is a series of three books offering stimulating and creative questions on a variety of maths topics. And we can see an example here, define a number. The challenges are set out in the front of the book and a little bit further on, comments and solutions help students with their working. At the very back, there is a glossary to help pupils with their understanding. Well, Jenny Andrews is going to use this resource with her Year 9 class, so let's see how they get on. Today, we're going to be doing um, problem-solving questions from these series of books, Maths Challenge. And you are going to, in your groups, work through the task that I've put on your desk. OK then, Jenny, can you tell me how you've been using the Maths Challenge books today? OK, I've um, selected a number of activities and prepared the resources for them. I've put the boys into teams of four. They have to go and choose an activity that they want to do, work on it in their groups of four. When they're happy that they've got an answer and they've checked it with me, then they can get up, move to another place uh, and do another activity. No, if you had two negative numbers, minus one plus minus one equals two. So what do you like about these books? I like them because they cover all the three varieties of learning styles, visual, auditory and kinesthetic. Um, so that helps me to assess them. So can you suggest any improvements to the resources? I would be looking that on each activity, a suggested level. If it's a key stage three book, I'd expect to see a level that they, you know, is this a level seven or a level eight um, activity aimed at those students who are aiming for that level in their sats. So based on what you've seen so far, what, what's your first impressions of the books? I've really enjoyed using them and, uh, and I know the boys have, so I think really good. And again, I'll be suggesting that to my department. Thank you very much, Jenny. Lots of enjoyment here. What do our panel think? Back to Hermione. Well, Matthew, coming to you first, what did you think of Maths Challenge? I really enjoyed uh, reading this book and uh, working through some of the, the problems with my classes. I uh, acknowledge that it is a, a challenging book for some, but there are also some elements of the uh, chapters which help you to be more precise in the language, and that will affect any ability. Uh, often in SATs they will ask you to explain why certain things are true or false and this hones those skills. For example, there's one chapter called Equals, right. and there are a series of uh, semi-equations which use the equal symbol, but in fact, really, more accurately and more specifically, could uh, be using different words and different right. ideas. Uh, for example, one cup of coffee equals 45 pence. Uh, we all know what that means, yeah. but in fact, one cup of coffee costs 45 pence, right. so that that refinement of language is very important. Right. Catherine, what did you make of Math Challenge? I've been a big fan of these books since they first came out. Right. I find that there's such a variety of uses for them. Uh, because there is a wide variety of topics, you can throw a particular 
page chapter right. in at the end or even in the middle or to introduce a new topic area they'll yeah. slot into your scheme of work yeah that's right and there are several different ways to use them rather than simply presenting your students with the page yeah. it's not a series that's designed to be prescriptive in terms of national curriculum levels and each pupil can take it as far as their ability will allow them and there is no need to stick to the levels i've used challenge one but with year nine right. mm -hmm. because it's just simple ideas and it gets them talking right. and that's what we're trying to do if they're going to solve problems using mathematics they need to be able to discuss mathematical ideas yeah Good i point. agree i think that um you as as mathematicians we're training our charges our students to think and what we're trying to i think do and with these books will help us is to inspire them in their competencies so that when they're presented with a problem that they haven't got an answer for they have the mechanism to be able to then attempt to solve it okay well thanks now let's move on to peter's third choice of resource for us today and it's uh, two volumes in one book with a great title aha gotcha and aha insight <laughs> tell us about this resource well, this is, this is very interesting. I think it's a very, a very different kind of resource to what we've seen so far. Um, it's trying to present things that a problem that you could battle with for quite a long time, but there's a sort of moment of insight that will help you hugely. Okay. And in many ways, that's quite hard to teach, but by showing the students a variety of different problems and letting them get to that moment of insight and see what's happening is, is really quite valuable for applying that kind of logic in other places. They're roughly in kind of sections, so there's some that are to do with logic, some that are to do with statistics, some which are to do with number. So you can be guided to a section of the book to look for a relevant kind of problem. What do the panel think, Catherine? I thought that the book could be a little bit daunting at first. And for the pupil or the teacher? For the teacher, right. even. It's not as ready to use as the other two resources. With Aha Gotcha, uh, I opened the first chapter and it was on logic. Uh, and if there's a topic that you would not want to start children off with, it would be logic. And right. there are a wealth of ideas in this book, but they need more developing than the other two. No, I agree. When I first read this book, I, I didn't like it at all. I really didn't. I was sitting there thinking, goodness, this is heavy. Uh, it's, it's a, a very high level. Um, it wasn't, in my view at the time, it didn't suit the students that I was going to be trying to work with it. But I got past the first few pages. <laughs> yeah. That was you the thing. To, you know, yeah. Those, those, those first few pages were very deep. I found a couple of really interesting things. And again, just again to stimulate discussion, I posed them the problem that the statistics show that most car accidents occur when cars are travelling at moderate speeds. So therefore, that means that you should all travel very fast in your cars. And you'll be much safer. And you'll be much safer, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Mathematically. Uh, and then I just said discuss. OK, well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are Mathematical Problem Solving from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, Maths Challenge, published by Oxford University Press, and the two-volume Aha Gotcha and Aha Insight, published by the Mathematical Association of America and supplied by Cambridge University Press. For more information about the resources that we've discussed, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel today, to Peter, to Catherine and to Matthew. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.